Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. He's referring to the children of Israel, your forefathers. Read on. Keep my word. He said, keep my words. Come on. And lay up my commandments. So he's saying, Elijah, that his word is his commandment. He's saying, keep it up in your heart. Read on. And lay up my commandments with thee. So how do you lay up commandments with you? Meaning, you study them, you learn them, now you're applying. So whenever the situations come, you remember his word, you keep and you're laying the commandments up with you. Watch what it's going to do for you, read. Keep my commandments and live. Remember what Christ said, right? He said, if you want to live forever, keep the commandments. Baruch in the Apocrypha, which is the Bible said, this is the book of the commandments of God and the law that liveth endureth forever. Read two again. Verse two. Keep my commandments and live. You want to live, don't you, Elijah? Read on. And my law as the apple of thine eye. You ever heard somebody say, and this is important, uh, you're a little younger than me. Uh, when I was younger, there used to be a term they used to say, man, that's my boy right there. That boy, the apple of my eye. You ever heard that before? That, what does that mean if I say, yo, my son is the apple of my eye? What does that mean? An apple symbolizes fruit, right? An apple is symbolic for being precious, right? So if you're the apple of my eye, that means you're my favorite. The apple, if I have three sons and two of them sell drugs, that one, he's the apple of my eye, right? Because why? He did the things you told him to do. Bring it he, up! He did what he was supposed to do to honor you. God's saying we got to be the same way. Read it again. Verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. So you want to live. We, we, we pre-step that with Matthew 19. Read on. And my law as the apple of thine eye. So you got to keep the laws of God, Elijah, as the apple of your eye. Meaning those laws are your favorite. You love to do them. So we showed you about dietary laws, right? Let me ask you a question. How do I discern whether or not let me let me take a step back what is today's day Elijah what day of the week are we in right now Saturday have you ever looked at a calendar before if you look at a calendar any bank calendar a school calendar what day of the week is first in the left if we're looking at a calendar what day of the week is in the left column you know no, 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 it always starts with Sunday, right? Right? And then the last day on the right is what? Saturday. It's Saturday. So if you start with Sunday, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the seventh day is actually Friday, sundown to Saturday. But what did you learn growing up in church? What day is the holy day that they celebrate? Be honest. Sunday is what they told us, right? So today is the holy Sabbath of the Lord. All right? That's right. What I want to do is have Solomon come back up and listen. So what's your nationality? What? You're black. Well, I, I'm going to read one more scripture. Oh, no, probably half Indian. Half Indian. All right. What does the Bible say so-called blacks, what nation they come out of? Solomon went over with you. 
the Israelites, brother, the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who you come from, man. You gotta learn that, the 12 tribes of Israel. How you doing today, brother, you all right? All right, my brother. What we going over is the history of what God gave to his people on how to survive in the land of their captivity. Let me ask you a question. Are we free as U.S. citizens? Are we free? No, we're liberated. We're liberated. Who liberated you? The white people, right? I'm at, you answer it with a question. Right, right, right. Well, you asking me, well, no, we're 100% no. not liberated because of the fact that you still have to get the right to revoke our uh, vote renewed on paper, but the Chinese don't, right. the white man doesn't, right. neither do the Arabs, but you lived right. here long. Right. So you are definitely not free. Right. You know, I'm going to show you something. Three, three verse eight. There's a difference. There's a big difference between you and, and other nations. You are better than them, but they have more rights than you because they're not the children of God and we are. Let That's right. Read. The book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 8. Check this out, bro. Behold, we are yet this day. Stop. Are you familiar with the Apocrypha by any chance? No. Chance. No. Let me explain what happened. The Apocrypha is books that were taken out of the Holy Bible Teach. back in the 1700s. Teach. The first Bible had was the King James Bible, which later was translated, had three major sections. One called the Old Testament, the other called the Apocrypha, which means hidden books, and the other called the New Testament. You with me? What our enemies did in slavery right before, uh, well, actually, when we was coming to America, they took the Apocrypha out of the Bible mainstream. But you can still buy the Apocrypha in most Bibles. Okay, many Bibles. Read. Verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Let me ask you a question. When did black people get the right to sit at the front of the bus? Not sure. You're not yeah, sure? Not for sure. sure. Now, it was actually in the 1960s. Okay. Uh, 1965, it was called the Civil Rights Voting Act. Bring it out. Before that time, 50 years ago, 54 years ago, you had to sit at the back of the bus, him too. Don't just think because he's light, he got a pass. Bring it out. Nigga just like you and me. Right. And I don't mean it to be disrespectful. Watch this, read it again. Verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are yet this day in our captivity. You want to know why we don't we don't run this place? And I say that for you to learn. If you take out money, right now anything, a quarter or a dollar or five dollar bill, can I see a brother that looked like him on the money? Do I see a brother that looked like you on the money? So that, are we ruling a society? Well, we are? Society. Yeah, very good. We're ruled in a society. Right. And who, what do the people look like on that money that you have in, in my pocket? They don't look like us. They look like the people that put us in what? In the chains. In huh? chains. So now, you, you on point. Ray, come on. Where thou hast scattered. So watch this. It, because we didn't listen to God. What's your name? Christian. Christian. Because we didn't listen to God, Christian, and Elijah, he used our enemies to scatter us into different lands. Right. Watch this. Read on. For a reproach. And now, what happens when black people, regardless of your education, regardless of much money, start moving in white areas? What? How are we looked upon, generally speak? Generally speak. What, what do they say about us? They look down on us. They look down on us? Some of them say three, four of them moving and we're moving out. Some of them say there goes the neighborhood. Some of them will, will try to be phony with you. Bring it up. Welcome you in, but at the same time, they'll never let you drink their best wine. They'll never let you in when they have uh, family over. Right. Why are we just sitting here reading really here? Verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. And that's Elijah and Christian. We are the Israelites, and we are in the land of our captivity. Right. Watch this, read. Where thou hast scattered us. And God is the one that did that to us. Because we, if you go in the ghetto right now, right? New Orleans is a ghetto, right? Right. Okay. Are Arabs killing black people in the ghetto? No. Are Caucasians, sometimes they do, pop. Do Caucasians kill? And my point is, who kills black people in the ghetto? Black people. 
other black people, right? right. So watch what it says. For a reproach and a curse. For a reproach and a curse. Read on. And to be subject to payments. That's what I'm talking about. We're subject to payments. When you read in the Old Covenant, when about King Solomon, King David, other nations paid taxes to the Israelites. That's right. Now, you pay, let you not pay your taxes. See what happened to you. And do those taxes go and directly benefit black people in America? You know why that's not true? When a so-called black president named Barack Obama came into power, what did he change for blacks in America? Bring it out. You can name more than one thing you're on. The only thing he gave us is doggone safe link cell phones. You know what he gave us? He gave us gay marriage. Right. And all that Bring filth and garbage that God sits against the most high. Right. right. Now read on. Now watch this. I got a question for you, Christian. How did black, your ancestors, because you're not black, you're really a brown. He's a lighter brown. He's a medium brown. But we're the Israelites. How did your ancestors come to get to this place here called the Americas? You sure about that? That's what I heard. That's what you heard. That's what I heard. Well, you heard about that. Now, in the Bible, it tells us that we, like uh, Simon was telling uh, Isaiah, uh, Elijah, it tells us what happened to our people because they did not want to do what God said. We were punished for our sins. Right. And I'm going to show you Deuteronomy 20 and 15. Listen good. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Now, well, like I told this brother, if you got a question about the Bible, I promise you I'll answer you. Anything you ever wanted to know, I'll answer for you. Great. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now we're going to stop right here. In the book of Deuteronomy, which was part of the first five books of the Bible, do you know who wrote the first five books of the Bible? Say, man, I'm putting that over there. Moses wrote them. Now, do you know what Moses looked like? Have you ever seen the movie The Ten Commandments? What are you, like 22 years old? How, oh my gosh. Look, in the movie The Ten Commandments by Cecil DeMille, the image that they paint Moses as was a Caucasian. That's how they represent him to the world. Now I'm gonna show you that that's not true. I'm gonna show you according to the Bible that Moses had a color. Literally, and not figuratively, literally. Give me Exodus 4. I'm gonna show you two examples of Moses. Exodus 2, 16, let's start with that, get to the part. So now, Moses, before he became a, um, a leader of the Israelites, where, what land was he in? He's in the land of Egypt. He's in the land of Egypt. I'm gonna show you something. Exodus 2, let me see. Okay, no problem. Um, start at 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 2 and verse 16. What I'm not going to do is be like a Christian pastor and rush through something. I'm going to make sure you understand what Moses looked like before I move and tell you what Moses said. Is that fair? Read. Not a priest. 16. Not Read. a priest of Midian has seven daughters. That's right for Exodus 4. We're not going in here. Read it again. Not a priest of Midian had seven daughters. This was a priest of Midian that had seven daughters. Watch what situation they were in. Read on. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. So they're filling troughs up because they have to water their father's animals. You with me? So this is the scenario. Moses is stepping on the scene. They're used to going, the, the daughters of the priest of Midian, getting water to, to, to water their father's, uh, you know. Thank you, thank you. Read on. Verse 17. And the shepherds came and drove them away. So, but there were shepherds, which were men. They came and said, get out of here. We're going to get our water first because we're shepherds and you just the daughters of a priest. Watch what happened, right? But Moses stood up and helped them. Stop. So what did Moses do here to these, these, these young ladies? What did he do? Read it again. But Moses stood up and helped them. What did Moses do? He helped them, yes. Watch this, read on. And helped them and watered their flock. So he helped them to get the water so they can give drinks to the animals, right? 
You might say, why am I to explain it? Read on. And when they came to Ruel, so now, later on that night, they came to Ruel. Ruel was their father, right? When they came to him, they were reporting how someone tried to bully them and get them out the way, but somebody came and stepped in, right? Read on. He said, how is it that ye are come so soon today? He said, normally, because normally they was getting pushed out the way every day. He said, how come today you back with my flock and they watered already? Read it again. Verse 18, and when they came to Ral, their fault, he said, how is it that you are come so soon today? You're back so early, daughters. Normally it takes you a lot longer. Read on. And they said, an Egyptian. Wait a minute, read again. And they said, an Egyptian. Now, read, read, you read, read it right. And they said, an Egyptian. But Moses was not an Egyptian. What color are the ancient Egyptians? Bring it out. Bro. What? Bro. You sure they're not white? The ancient Egyptians are what? They're black. They're black. So, so Moses looked like an Egyptian. And they didn't know who Moses was. They just said, hey, an Egyptian. That's like saying, I don't know, some black guy. So we know that Moses is black. Now, here's some further proof, Exodus 4. You ever heard of leprosy before? What is leprosy? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a skin disease, right? Yes, it is. Now, I'm going to show you that Moses, uh, this is one of the miracles that Moses, remember when he had the cane and he turned into a snake? And then the Pharaoh turned his, uh, their, his magicians turned it, their cane into a snake? Yeah. Remember, Moses did certain miracles. One of the miracles that they did not put in the movie because they knew it was blow their spot up. Bring it out! This right here, read. It's the book of Exodus chapter four and verse six. And the Lord said furthermore to him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. Now go to verse one. Verse one. Moses we're talking about. Because a lot of Negroes in the streets say that ain't talking about Moses. This is talking of, read it again. Verse one. And Moses answered and said. Who is answering now? Who is it? It's Moses, right? What did Moses, what did they, the daughters of Midian confuse him for? What race of people? Egyptians. What color are the Egyptians? Black, black. Now keep that in mind. Read. But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. Because the people are like, look, uh, Moses, like, the people are not going to believe me, God. Read on. For they will say, the Lord had not appeared unto thee. Because Moses was not confident in himself at the time. He said, Father, if you send me to them, they're not going to believe what you tell me. So this is what we're talking about Moses here. Now jump to the part where we initially started. Six. Verse six. Listen. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him. So furthermore is still speaking to who? Furthermore to Moses, read on. Put now thine hand into thy bosom. Now watch this. Now I don't have a garment that opens up. But this say this is my bosom, which is your chest. So if I put my hand in my bosom, right? Come on. And he put his hand into his bosom. So he puts his hand right here. Look here, right? And when he took it out. So he took it out. Behold, his hand was leprous as snow. What color is snow? What? Bring it out. What? What? So Moses' hand, when he took it out, like you said, it's a skin disease. It turns it's almost white, but like very, very. Put now thy hand into thy bosom. Put thy hand into thy bosom again. Very, 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 very. I'm talking about, you know, you ever seen an albino before? Yeah. He got a nose that's wide, wider than yours, right. but whiter than a white boy. Right. Because that's a skin disease, right? Right. Leprosy. Right. Watch this. So Moses took his hand out, and it was leprous as what color? So, read on. Verse 7. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. This is still Moses. He said, listen, put it back in your door. And he put his hand into his bosom again. Put it back in his bosom again. And plucked it out of his bosom. Then he put it back out. You with me? And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So my question to you is, what color was his other flesh? Black. That's exactly correct. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission.
Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.